The Rising Importance of Bubakar Kamara. Sometimes you don't know what you've got until it's gone, as that saying goes. And in January, we found that out pretty, pretty quickly when Bubakar Kamara got sent off against Brentford and had to miss three games. Those three games were Sheffield United, Manchester United and Burnley. Bubakar Kamara is integral to Unai Emery's Aston Villa system. Sheffield United, we lacked that little bit of control at home, that little bit of presence and dominance and support against Sheffield United, and we ended up drawing that game. Against Manchester United, we completely fell apart in the second half. No control, no physical presence, a little bit of a lack of leadership at times. And then Burnley, we ended up winning that game, but as you know, it was end-to-end. Burnley scored two goals. We lacked control, and those were three games that we really, really missed Bubakar Kamara in and Aston Villa shirt. But I'm going to take you back. I think it's important to take you back to Bubakar Kamara's early days at Marseille, where we can really see the development of Bubakar Kamara. What I want to do in this episode is highlight the importance of Bubakar Kamara to not only show you stats, but to show you images of the key components to Bubakar Kamara's game, which for me make him one of Europe's best central defensive midfielders. He's that good. He's a £100 million player, in my opinion. And I just want to highlight those key characteristics and show you the importance of Kamara in an Aston Villa shirt. So we will go backwards. We will go to the Marseille early days. And as you can see from this graphic, this was Bubakar Kamara's last ever game for Marseille. And he was playing as a central defender. So it's important that we're looking at Kamara's player profile and the key attributes that he's good at. As we get onto those later on in the episode, this position for me will highlight one of those key strengths of Bubakar Kamara. Kamara's last but one game for Marseille was deployed in a double pivot. So as you can see from the heat map, his role is pretty, pretty central. I think when everybody thinks of a, a CDM, you, you would imagine that this is the ideal heat map for a CDM. But as Bubakar Kamara has developed at Aston Villa, his positioning has completely changed. So this was Bubakar Kamara's, and I'm sorry that I've got to remind you, of his first ever game in an Aston Villa shirt. And this was a way to Bournemouth first game of the season where we lost under Steven Gerrard. As you can see from this graphic, this was when we had Jacob Ramsey and John McGinn actively acting as fullbacks. And then the fullbacks going further forward. And Bubakar Kamara was, was in there on his own, really, having to operate as a sort of as a CDM um, and having to sort of make sure that he's protecting the back four. As we develop into the Unai Emery system, this was his heat map against Everton. So you can see where his positioning has changed. He's now actively more operating on that right-hand side, covering Consac, covering Carlos and just making sure that that back three is protected when Alex Moreno goes forward. So you can also see that although his heat map is heavily dominant in the right-hand side, actively acting as a CDM, he does go forward, he does operate a little bit further forward, and he does press really, really well. And I've highlighted the next graphic for me is Bubakar Kamara's best game. This was a game where... We saw so many attributes of Kamara that were, were just eye-opening to me. And it was absolutely sensational. So bear in mind, look at the bottom right of this graphic against Everton. And then when we switch to Manchester City, it's heavy on that bottom right-hand side. But in the opposition half, 
It's so, so heavy. The press has been engaged with Bubakar Kamara. And with an Unai Emery system, we know tactically that we can tweak our system, tweak the way we play game by game. We don't play the same way every single week. Yes, against teams that play with a low block, we, we generally operate with Kamara sitting more on that right-hand side. His role is to protect that back three slash four and allow us to have more territorial advantage when going forward. But when teams do press us, when teams do want to attack us, we can switch our tactics so that we can engage with the opposition a little bit further forward. And as you can see from this one against Manchester City, he is more forward, pressing more and a lot more aggressive. And I love this from Bubakar Kamara. So we have a graphic from AVFC Scout. You will be familiar with them on this channel. They showcase their scouting ability with their stats and their analysis. They're a great channel, so make sure you go and check them out on X slash Twitter, uh, AVFC Scout. You can see his little logo on that bottom right-hand side as well. So we've got a great graphic here now showcasing what Bubakar Kamara has been all about in 23 24. So again, you can see his heat map on the right hand side, heavy at that bottom right, but also really heavy on that top right hand side as well, really engaging with the opposition. So we'll have a look at the squad ranking based on Aston Villa players. Uh, so you can see that his pass is completed, he's sitting in fifth place. This is per 90, by the way. Pass accuracy is second, passes into the final third, second, progressive passes fifth. Carries fifth. Now, this is where we start getting into the key attributes of Bubakar Kamara. Tackles attempted second. Tackles won first. Interceptions first. And ball recoveries third. So, we're going to start talking about his, his key attributes in a second when I can show you graphics. But here you can see tackles won, interceptions, ball recoveries. He's at that top bracket. He's at that top bracket for Aston Villa. And he does a, an absolute wonderful job at doing all of these things that, he, that are his, his key attributes. So next up, what I want to show you are what are Bubakar Kamara's key traits, key attributes? What are the main factors of Bubakar Kamara? There is one main factor for me. and. This is the biggest thing that I could say about Bubakar Kamara. And I think he's one of the best in the Premier League. He's one of the best midfielders in Europe, in my opinion. And it's his positioning. You don't really get too many stats based on positioning in football. You know, best position, best positional awareness, best position taking up player to win the ball or retrieve the ball. but. Bubakar Kamara's positioning is absolutely outstanding. Outstanding is his positioning. His positioning, and this is his reading of the game, taking on instructions from the manager. These three little characteristics for me put him in a standalone position because he's absolutely tremendous at doing it. His positioning allows him to read danger. He's a little bit like a firefighter with a hose. If a fire breaks out over there, he's over there. If another one breaks out over there, he's over there. And that's all his reading of the uh, reading of the game. His brain is continually ticking, continually moving, a little bit lo like Luis, always looking around, sensing danger. But the big thing about Kamara is when there is danger, he is there. And that is so, so important. His, his tackling is brilliant. His interceptions are great. But all of these come into positioning for me. And this is where he's got this position absolutely locked down. So I'm going to show you some graphics now. And this is, I picked the game that I thought he had the best game for Aston Villa this season. So I've gone with, I've gone with the graphic of, we've gone for, Manchester City. So Manchester City, I have picked this game uh, and this is where I feel like he had a really, really good game. So when I'm talking about positioning, you can already see him here now, right? This is very early on in the game 
And he's marshalling the team. He's marshalling Bailey. He's marshalling Tielemans. He's working with Conta, making sure that every player is where they need to be. And this was just an absolute brilliant graphic that I, I found straight away. And if you if you go on the uh, total 90 highlights for this game, you'll see him, this game, absolutely brilliant. He's looking, he's looking where to go. He's looking at the danger. And positionally, he's absolutely spot on here. Sensing danger, covering the back three and four, absolutely brilliant. So next up, we have got his role in build-up. His role in build-up is very, very important. Um, you can see here that Man City had a full press on Aston Villa. So uh, Haaland has pressed Martinez. You've got probably Bernardo Silva pressing Pau. You've got a full-back pressing our full-back. You've got Luis pressing Luis. And then you've got uh, Alvarez pressing Kamara and then someone pressing um uh, Concert as well. So they're in full press here. But in, within build-up, Bubakar Kamara is heavily, heavily involved in Aston Villa's build-up and he's so important to it as well. Next graphic, we have got Firefighter Sensing Danger. As you can see, Bubakar Kamara with that sort of lean, long leg that he just dangles out and he whips the ball and he just takes it from the opposition. Here you can see Heavily involved in winning that ball back for Aston Villa. And in this moment, we did retrieve and win the ball back. And we played it out with Leon Bailey. Another side to his game that's heavily important is build-up. We've spoke about the build-up from the keeper, but also the build-up from midfield to wide. And then back into progressive passes into players that are sitting further forward, like Ramsey, McGinn, Diaby. And Bailey, here you can see build up a nice little slide rule pass here into Yuri Tielemans. Great vision. And it's just one of those nice little slide rule passes. Uh, and he's just knocked it off to Tielemans. So his passing range is very important. But note his positioning as well. It's in that area there where his heat map is heavily dominant when he's trying to protect that back three and back four. He's very, very good under pressure as well. He plays well under pressure. He plays well when he's being pressed. He's, he dribbles well when he's being pressed as well. You'll, you'll notice that little drop of the shoulder and that go. And then he can turn and he can drive forward as well. Uh, we can see here that this is when we were heavily pressing Manchester City in this game as well. Note Douglas Luiz has just pressed. And then this here is Bubakar Kamara. So depending on the opposition, depending on the game, Bubakar Kamara can adapt and move further forward into a put full press for Aston Villa. So we know that sometimes when we're playing against teams with a low block, he'll be a little bit more defensive on that right-hand side. But depending on opposition, if Uno wants us to press, then you can see Bubakar Kamara here is fully engaged on the press very, very aggressive. And to have a midfielder that can do all of these roles is absolutely sublime. And I think sometimes when we look at players and we look at transfer windows and we look at players coming in, you can think, oh, he's a free. He's not that good, is he? If he's free, why does nobody else want him? You know, just because somebody can be a free, yes, you pay the wages and he's on an absolutely massive wages at Aston Villa over the course of a five-year period. So then that accounts to a very, very large fee, large signing on fee. Bubakar Kamara was free. And for Aston Villa to get Kamara at a time where there were so many Champions League clubs after him, fair play to Aston Villa because he's absolutely sensational. And if we're talking about players that are of a similar sort of Mould, Declan Rice, Lavia went to Chelsea for, well, what was it, 60 million? You've got Caicedo at 100 million. Kamara's doing more than what Caicedo was doing. And Kamara can do multiple things that I don't think Caicedo can do. So for me, Kamara, 100 million pound player, he is that good. Next up is something that I loved in this game from Bubakar Kamara. And that was his driving runs into the final third against Manchester City. We know that he can carry the ball from deep, 
But to see him doing this against Manchester City was absolutely sensational. The drive on him is, is incredible. He plays the ball off um, and then that sets up another... I think this sets up the Ollie Watkins chance where he, he nearly goes through. So, yeah, this is another attribute to his game that he can do driving forward, long busting runs. Absolutely brilliant. And then finally, something that we don't really see too much from him is you can see him here. He's just there. He is. He plays this beautiful little ball into Ollie Watkins. And this is something that we, we, we rarely see from him, but something that I think he can improve and, and, and build on and grow into his game as Aston Villa develop and get better and better. Here, you can see Aston Villa are literally all camped into Manchester City's half here. So the territorial dominance and the positional play of Aston Villa being in that area has got Douglas Louise, John McGinn, Ollie Watkins. I think we've got Bailey. We've got uh, Kamara. Not sure who that is off screen. Might be, would it have been Tielemans? And then we've got Luca Dean here. Every Villa player territorially camped into Manchester City's half. Absolutely fantastic. And what, what a sublime game that was to watch. And this game, for me, has highlighted all of the key attributes into Abubakar Kamara as a player. And I, and I just think he's he's absolutely brilliant. And I can only see Kamara getting better in a Villa shirt. And we've seen how important he is. We saw how, when he's out of the team, that we really miss him. But we saw against Middlesbrough and Everton, the importance of having him back just gives us that little bit more of a stronghold and it just gives us that more of a platform to be more creative and have more controlling games. So he's so, so important. How do I see him getting better and where do I see him going? I see him getting better. I see him getting more. I see him playing at slightly further up at times, moving on in the future. I think as Aston Villa evolve and Unai gets better players in, you know, and that's the fundamental aspect of, of how we're going to get better. We get better players in and we get Uno Emery players in and we get Monchi players in and we get players that are for the future. That's all going to grow Aston Villa and the way that we can play. You know, we've got to remember that although we are doing fantastically well, most of the players aren't Uno Emery players and he's going to bring in players to suit his system and the way he wants to play. When I look at Aston Villa's system as a whole, and I'm looking at Aston Villa's team at the minute, and we've touched on it a little bit over the last couple of days, is that this is the first sort of... this No, this is the second system that we've had under Unai Emery. The first system that we had under Unai Emery was very, very similar to this. But it was more about defence, I felt, last season. Last season was more about defence. It was more about how can we win games, but how can we nick games? And this type of formation was something that we saw last season quite a lot, especially away from home. That six at the back with the three in front and Ollie Watkins was our defensive shape. How many times did we see the players that are playing in that box midfield go back and actively act as a fullback, and then we've become so narrow. That was generally how we played away from home, Southampton away, Spurs away. That that's, that was our general shape, and what we were really good was able to sit in, and with quality, we were able to break really, really quickly, and we was able to get a lot of joy by by breaking quickly, by nicking games, by just being a good counter-attacking team. And that was Unai Emery's first phase of being Aston Villa manager. Now, he, we know he wanted to be a possession-based team because we was playing out from the back quite a lot. But what he's adapted us to be this season in such a short space of time is a possession-based team that plays slow and intricate football but can be fast and direct at the same time. And that's the beauty of Unai's team, that it doesn't play the same every single week. And I think that's something that's really important and, and that's the sign of a great manager. Last season as well, it was more of this player would go forward, 
This player would sit in a little bit tighter. So the left back would go forward. But this season, what we've seen is that we're happy to be more dominant with the ball. So as you can see from all of the graphics that I've showed you, Kamara will sit in through there. You've got Louise in a double pivot. And then this is how we've evolved to be what we are this season. But we're not going to keep playing this same way for the next three or four years with Unai Emery. It's going to develop and it's going to grow and it's going to get better. And I think the start of us having control in games and having all of this position possession has been really, really good. But we now need to start seeing the quality further up the pitch. And I think that's that's the next phase of how do we still have all of this control but how do we really unlock and break these teams down um, and not get caught? And, and I think that's the next phase. The hardest part is having the control and having the possession, which is what we're doing this season. But the next phase is how do we keep winning those games away from home? How do we keep breaking down those low blocks? How do those low blocks not become a problem? And I think it's more quality further up the pitch. And I think what that will do is... If you look at how we're generally playing at the minute and we've kind of got five players that are a little bit more defensive and then we've got five players that are a little bit more attacking, in my opinion, it's about getting six players that are more attacking and less players that are doing that defensive role. So I think for me, if we've got Kamara in, a pit, in there on his own and then we've maybe got players that are a little bit further forward... Um, and then I spoke about the other day of maybe sort of bringing in power, power left back, and then you can bring in another central defender. So I'll just pick Mings because I've just found him easier. So if we take Luke Dean out and we put Mings there, and then you've got your back four and you're bringing in power into there, and then you can get more players going into there. And then Kamara can maybe sit a little bit further up as well, get a little bit more dominance there then you've already got more players that are into that final third and you've got more control with Kamara in this area. So it's one to keep an eye on. I think this is how potentially we might be evolving. And I think Kamara's role can play anywhere in there. We've shown that he's really press resistant anyway. So I think this is something that I'm going to start to look at. Uh, and I think how we can possibly evolve, especially with more players going forward anyway. So it's something to keep an eye on, but I definitely feel like Kamara's development, because he's so young, can develop a little bit further. So instead of playing in these areas, he's playing more in these areas and Villa then can start getting more controlling games. So he's an absolute wonderful footballer. I absolutely love watching him. And my opinion so far this season has slightly changed a little bit of who my favourite player now is for Aston Villa. And I've gone through a few so far, and these are probably my player of the seasons anyway. But my favourite three Villa players at the minute are Pau, Louise and Kamara. And I'm slightly edging now more towards Kamara as my favourite Villa player because I think he's so important to our team. I think, yes, we can look at players and think, I love goal scorers. I love players that get assists. But those players are nothing without that protection and that player that can knit it all together. So for me, Bubakar Kamara is absolutely fantastic. And I just really wanted to do an episode on Kamara, on Kamara's game, on his attributes, how he plays, what he does well. And hopefully I've been able to translate that with images, graphics, stats, etc. So if you have enjoyed this episode, if you have got this far, please subscribe. Um, it means the world to me. Uh, if you can smash a like as well and comment your thoughts, it's highly appreciated. But up the Bubakar Kamara and up the Villa.